Guys, Cecil here once again. Hey, I wanted to do a, a quick video and touch base on, on kind of Nintendo, do kind of a couple of indirect follow-ups uh, to both my Super Nintendo uh, Classic video and my uh, NBA 2K18 and uh, third-party uh, improvement video that I did a handful of months back, just because there's been a lot of news that's come out in recent weeks um, that I haven't really had a chance to touch base with you guys on yet, and I just wanted to get my opinion on those things and, and the continued direction of uh, Nintendo and, and how they're handling things so far and what we're going to be looking at really going into Christmas. So I, I think last week um, the really big things were both the, uh, the Nintendo Direct um, as well as the Super Nintendo Classic. The end of September was a, a really big uh, month for a uh, really big uh, week or two for uh, Nintendo as far as major announcements and, and big releases. You know, the Super Nintendo Classic released last week. Uh, Pokemon Tournament came out. A lot of big indie titles like Golf Story released, uh, which is really phenomenal, by the way. Um, last fr Thursday especially was a, a just a swath of indie titles. Boy, they are... I mean, if, if you didn't think uh, the Switch was an indie system before, it, it is now officially an indie dumping ground. And for fans of those kinds of games, um, it, it is definitely a uh, thing to look at, to say the least, especially if you uh, uh, have a Switch and you haven't really looked at the eShop much yet uh, and you're waiting for the virtual console to show up. I mean, there's a ton of stuff that is already released and getting released. Um, but I digress a little bit. Um, obviously, the big thing that came out last week was the wonderful little Super Nintendo Classic. Um, I was a little leery uh, from my video going into the release of the device. You know, I was had shades of uh, the NES Classics launch day last year and, uh, you know, the very, you know, short supply. And it seems from the general impressions I've read online, <clears throat> as well as the number of people I were was able to hear and see get one, it seems like there were definitely a lot more out there on launch day. Now, not everyone got one. There are still definitely a lot of them attempting to be flipped on eBay and Amazon and, and Craigslist for probably at least two or three times what they go for. Um, but I think at least to an extent, Nintendo seemed to get the message last year and into the first part of this year that the uh, NES Classic was sorely underproduced and that they needed to get more of these out into the, uh, into the public. And it seems like at least the initial batch, there were definitely more Super Nintendo Classics out there and that then there were NES Classics on, on day one compared to November of last year when the NES Classic came out. But the, the question still remains is how quickly are, is Nintendo going to be able to restock retailers and how many... Uh, how many uh, units are retailers going to get? Um, just to kind of give you an example, um, for those of you who don't know, I, I work at GameStop, and even after the initial batch of Super Nintendo Classics, um, the slow and very trickle of restocks, we may have seen one or two units every two or three weeks or so between the time it released in November um, through April when it was finally discontinued, and they were very few and far between. We were surprised when one or two even showed up just because, you know, we got no word that they were even coming when our shipments came in. It, it was a pretty, a pretty poor overall handled thing by Nintendo, and at least it seems like Nintendo, at least from a public face, is attempting to you know, say, hey, we're going to have more, but we haven't seen any restocks yet, any numbers yet, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that, you know, the scalpers and all the people that were able to get multiple units and are trying to flip them won't be able to do it for very long because Nintendo is going to be able to flood um, the market with these through Christmas and just get more out there because the demand is there. The device... While it's basically a glorified plug-and-play, the quality of the games on here is really good. Um, you get two controllers with it. Now, you can debate the merits of having something like a Raspberry Pi and, you know, thousands of games and emulators and, and things like that on a device hooked up to your TV. Um, but for the people that do that sort of thing, this isn't really what Nintendo was uh, was gunning for. They were gunning for the collectors like me. They were gunning for the, the people in their 20s and 30s who grew up with the system, who may have families now, who remember those games fondly, remember that system. 
as well as kind of the the casual broader market that's a, a little tech dumb when it comes to things like emulators and things. And Nintendo knows that people are going to hack the hell out of this thing. They're going to add um, thousands of uh, ROMs onto this whenever they get the opportunity and they figure out how to hack this little thing. That was an inevitability. They could have put a, tried to put a cartridge slot on it. They could have tried to put an online store on it. Uh, they could have tried to patch all that hacking via firmware updates, but I think they realized the important thing was just to get the device out in people's hands that truly cared about a lot of those classic games, especially the people who grew up with the Super Nintendo and the NES Classic too. Um, and they wanted just to get that initial money up front, and then what people did with the device afterwards was was their call. Um, a lot of people are going to probably load the thing with ROMs. You know, some people probably are going to take it out back and use it for batting practice. Batting practice, excuse me. The important thing to Nintendo, though, is they got your 80 bucks, they tickled their no your nostalgia bone, um, and what you do with the device afterwards, play it, enjoy it, whatever you do, it it's your call. And I think from the perspective of this day and age of a corporation like Nintendo, that's about the best thing you can hope for when you have a device like this. Um, but just to kind of uh, read through the games here real quick, I'm not going to go through everything. Obviously, the big thing on this thing was the inclusion of Star Fox 2, and... Uh, I'm not going to go into spoilers too much. I've not even come close to beating it. I've only played it for a couple of hours. But you can definitely see the um, the foundation of a lot of the latter Star Fox games with all a lot of the ideas in Star, in Star Fox 2, especially coming from the first one. The uh, FX2 uh, graphics that use that tip chip were definitely noticeable. It was definitely a noticeable improvement over the first uh, Star Fox, to say the least. Obviously, it wasn't going to look as good as Star Fox 64. Um, but it was just kind of cool to see this kind of like hidden you know, game we never got a chance to play. I know the the the, the ROM of the uh, the beta versions has been floating out there for years online, so it's not like people haven't been able to play this game, but to actually get it officially released and to actually have, like, a follow-up to a Star Fox game. Now, there have been sequels like, you know, Star Fox Adventure, Star Fox Assault, Star Fox Command, but it seems like every so often, be it the original Star Fox, Star Fox 64, or Star Fox Zero... They've always rebooted the franchise. You know, the core story is the same, just with a, with maybe a slightly different variations between each of the reboots. But Star Fox 2, at least, feels like a, a true sequel to the original Star Fox, even if it changed a lot of the, uh, the gameplay mechanics from just the pure rail shooter that the first one was. But it was kind of cool to see the new characters they added and finally be able to play this kind of lost game. And uh, Nintendo actually acknowledges... It, it existed and it, it's just it's cool to have it in an official capacity now and to me alone that was worth getting uh, the system for just to have that official capacity of owning Star Fox 2 in a legitimate form from Nintendo I'm sure we'll probably see it on the virtual console you know on the 3DS or or the switch at some point down the point the, down the pike but it was just kind of cool so uh, what I say is it really worth it to get this if you got 80 bucks um, and you want a, a, a neat little box to plug into your TV, especially if you're in the 20, in your 20s and 30s and you grew up or had a Super Nintendo as a kid, and you want a quick, easy plug-and-play way to uh, relive some of your childhood memories, the value that's on the box compared to what you would either um, spend individually for the cartridges or even to download those games off a you know virtual shop like on the Wii or the Wii U, um, it's still a very good value for the 2021 20, games that are on the device. So, you know, from that perspective, yes, you can emulate them on your computer or any hundreds of other ways within Raspberry Pi. But, you know, from just tickling your uh, nostalgia bone a little bit, it's a neat little box to have. And if you got the 80 bucks and you can find one easily enough, don't spend the 150, 200 bucks they're going for on eBay. Be patient if you did not get one. Um, but I think it's a cool, neat little collector's piece to have like the NES Classic. And thankfully, Nintendo next year, according to them, they are going to be doing an NES uh, Classic restock and re redo it because I think there's a lot of people that did not get an opportunity to play that that still want to get an NES Classic. And thankfully, next year, it sounds like Nintendo is going to make more of those. But kind of moving on to the uh, second half of the video and kind of going more into the current Nintendo system, the Switch, uh, the system has been doing very good. Um, it seems like almost every month sales, if it's not the top selling console in North America, it's number two right behind the PlayStation 4 most months. 
um, and it's definitely going to continue to sell well, probably through Christmas. Um, but the the big news was the was the Nintendo Direct and some big third party announcements that were dropped. Obviously, a few weeks back with the Nindy Showcase, the new No More Her Heroes game got announced, so that's officially coming. Um, even though we kind of technically knew something was coming back from the Switch reveal back in February, it was finally to see a neat teaser trailer for it. So it's definitely officially coming now. And the new third party announcements coming from Bethesda, especially. Holy cow! On top of Skyrim, which we already knew. Uh, was coming. We're also getting Doom and Wolfenstein 2, two big modern AAA shooters. So Bethesda, at least, is fully on board with the Switch, it seems. And that is really great to see. You also got a, a port of L.A. Noir, you know, a remaster of the 360 and PS3 game. You've got a lot of uh, Nindies uh, coming here in the next several months. Um, this just is the start of it, you know, Stardew Valley. Um, a whole SteamWorld uh, Dig 2 just came out, and I'm just, I can't even think of all the dozens that are coming in probably the next six to nine months, let alone just coming before Christmas. Um, so on top of Nintendo's, you know, already stellar holiday lineup, um, between, you know, Mario Rabbids that came out last month, Pokemon Tournament that just came out this month, you've got the new Fire Emblem, you got Skyrim, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Mario Odyssey, uh, the Revelations 1 and 2 pack. I mean, I'm just kind of, you know, what's coming to my mind, I'm just blurting out here. But I think from a perspective for Nintendo of a, a system that released in March for the first nine months, its first calendar real year, it was out on the market and coming into an important holiday for it. I don't think the Switch probably could have done much better than it already has. And a lot of people are excited for it. There are still people wanting to buy the console. It, it's become a little easier to find, um, I will say, although that's going to definitely uh, ramp up again and become harder to find, especially once we get into November and the, and the height of the holiday shopping season. So if you want a, a Switch before Christmas and you have the money, I wouldn't wait too much longer, especially once November rolls around and Mario is out. Switches are going to become a lot much, uh, they're going to become a lot harder to find if they haven't been already. Um, but regardless, um, I know a lot of people have been criticizing the Switch, you know, for its lack of internal memory. You know, the NBA 2K18 release was a, was a prime example. It's, you know, some of these bigger third-party games down the road, and even by buying the physical chip, uh, the cart of the game will still require a, an external uh, SD card um, just because of the only the uh, 32 gigs that's on the system is pretty paltry. Even the Wii U back in 2012 with only 32 gigs was 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 laughable. And the fact the Switch, yes, it is a portable device, but at least to me, I think at some point Nintendo should probably release, you know, a, a, a Switch, maybe an improved slim Switch or a, a, an overall improved system with at least you know 128 or 256. Uh, gigabytes of internal down the road. Uh, the 32 will get you started, but if you plan on doing any sort of digital downloading or any buying any even major third-party retail games, that 32 gigs isn't going to last long. I've got a 128 gig uh, SD card in mine that I got a good deal on back at launch, so I'm okay for the immediate future, But even though I still mainly buy retail cards. But I'm sure at some point I'm going to probably even fill up that 128 gig, you know, just with downloads of, uh, you know, uh, you know, indie titles and any uh, digital games that I might purchase on sale because I won't turn down a, a good sale on on the system even if the physical cart might be I more might desire that more if there's a digital version of the game that can be had at a good deal on on uh, download I won't turn down a good digital sale so I'm sure at some point in the next couple of years I'll fill up that 128 gig memory card but I digress. Overall, I think Nintendo's in a really good spot right now, especially coming into the last three months of the year. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Did you get a Super Nintendo Classic? Uh, have you had a chance to play a lot of the games? Uh, have you gotten your Switch? What have you been enjoying lately on it? Uh, let me know down in the comments below, guys. And as always... Um, thank you very much for following me. I apologize for the lack of uploads in recent weeks. It's been kind of a busy uh, time of the year for me, um, and we're getting into Christmas time, but I'm definitely going to try to get back to my schedule of at least one new video a week, um, and especially my heart, not that probably a lot of people in Vegas are going to see this or anyone who's affected by it, but my heart does go out to all the people uh, and all the shootings and the people that were either hurt or killed in their families in that tragedy in Vegas uh, that happened last night. Um, my, my condolences and my heart goes out to everyone that was affected by that. But as always, guys, you take it easy, and I'll see you next time.